Meow. 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 You look quite a bit pudgier than you really are from this angle. It's okay. Good kitten internet. Ah, I'm really zoomed in. Sorry, I was zoomed in from the Asun shot. Good kitten internet, as I mentioned before. Um, so, today's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to... Well, show you, this is the first video of my new project that I'm going to be working on. This project may take me even longer than my vlog, or my beta, but, well, this is the first part. So, I've always wondered, when it comes to computers in current era, what to use all of the space inside of a computer for. So, here, let me show you. Hold on. This is the inside of a relatively standard ATX form factor case. This particular case is fairly old. This is actually from the computer that I built while I was in college. But it'll do. There's, there's a lot of space here. See? There's like nothing sitting here. It's just a whole bunch of space. So I've always been trying to figure out something to do with this space. So in... Trying to research this online, I ended up finding somebody who had recommended as one of the things to put inside of one of these empty spaces, another computer. Um, smaller computers, such as the Raspberry Pi, can... I mean, that's easily small enough to fit in a three and a half inch bay, or a five and a quarter inch bay. But... All of these things online never explain the why. Why would you bother? I mean... I'm a sysadmin. I can virtualize pretty much anything in any of my computers without too much of an issue. But I was thinking about it for a while, and the answer is... No, I actually can't virtualize everything. There are certain things that don't virtualize well, especially when it comes to gaming. Um, for an example, trying to play Daggerfall, you basically have two options. One, you can emulate DOS through something like DOSBox, that works reasonably well. You're at about 85% speed or so. Or two, you can emulate x86 itself, and that's what a virtual machine basically ends up doing. Create a VM of DOS, but now you're even slower. You may be more accurate, but you're a little, and you're even slower and have more compatibility issues. So really what you need to do is actually run DOS. Uh, specifically, you should be running hardware that's 32 or 16-bit hardware. You should be running hardware that's relatively contemporary, uh, contemporaneous. Not necessarily time-wise, but spec-wise with what you were running. And, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why you might want to run real hardware. So, the same comes for a few other things. So, that's where this project came about. Its name... It's no longer an accurate name for it, but I kept the name because it's awesome. It's the Computing Turducken. And today I'm going to start the Computing Turducken project. First off, let me show you the computers that will be going inside. So, there's three of them total. Uh, first one, right here, this is Raspberry Pi, as mentioned before. So the Raspberry Pi was the first one of these I wanted to do because it's easy. Other people have done this before and have done it fairly successfully at that. All I'm going to do is place the Raspberry Pi inside of the machine, try to integrate as many things as possible, which you'll see a little bit more a bit later, and effectively make it look right. The computer that you saw earlier is going to be the one that I'm going to be doing this in, mostly because it's a spare case that has plenty of space, and I don't have the greatest dexterity, um, manual dexterity in my fingers, so I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't be bumping into things constantly. But, truth be told, there's no reason why this has to be in such an old case, or such a large case even. I may end up moving it to one of my smaller cases later on. So anyway, step one is the Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B+. So, it's, as of the recording of this video, it's the most recent Raspberry Pi that we have. Um, there'll be a few other parts as well to go with it, and I'm... I'm going to be going into more depth on each of the computer parts in their own episodes. Today's episode is going to be the Raspberry Pi, for reference, because that's the easy one. The second one I have here is this machine. Uh, you may have, when I was introducing my computers, you may have briefly seen its specs flash on the screen. This machine is a NUC. This is actually an industrial case for the NUC. It's really hard to see. 
um, when I do the episode on that particular compute module, I will show the insides and so on, but it's effectively a relatively new machine. It's Ivy Bridge, which is five or six generations old, depending on how you count. But hardware-wise, it's not that dissimilar to hardware from today. This NUC is actually going to be running Windows XP, because it's one of the original NUCs. Um, NUC, for reference, stands for Next Unit of Computing. It's an Intel trademark. Um, they are 40, uh, 470 millimeter by 470 millimeter motherboards, which that part is very important to me. But the original ones actually have drivers for Windows XP. So this will be running Windows XP, bare metal, and I will be running certain games on it that only really run well on Windows XP. Uh, an example would be Oblivion or Fallout 3. Those two really don't like running on Windows 10. So it's got a dedicated XP machine. Then the final machine here. Um, this is probably not going to be the one that will actually be in use because unfortunately this machine's broken. I may end up figuring out how to repair it. Is this. This is a wise ThinOS Thin Client. Um, thin clients are frequently used in the enterprise for remote terminals. Um, if you're one of the older people that may be watching, you may have been familiar with the concept of a dumb terminal, which is basically you have a terminal on your desk. It has no real smarts to speak of, hence the dumb and smart, um, and it connects back to a central server. And if that con and connects back to a central server that has compute power and does the processing for you. All you're basically doing is having a viewpoint in on what you're running. And if that sounds familiar for those of you that are more familiar with more modern hardware, it's because computing technology tends to go in cycles. Um, it's very similar in concept to a Chromebook, actually, or a large variety of other things. Anyway, um, this thing client in particular, however, is running a normal x86 processor. Um, x86 being the architecture for well, modern computers. And that one in particular happens to be able to run Windows 98 and DOS. So that will be my 98 machine. Well, again, there's something wrong with it, so I'm probably either going to have to replace it with a different model or potentially figure out how to fix it. I don't actually know what's wrong. Um, so I've got DOS, Windows 98, Windows XP, and then the Raspberry Pi is mostly for emulating anything else that I particularly care about. And the idea is that I'm going to be putting all of this inside of the same machine where it's relatively easy for me to flip a switch, turn on one of the components, and kind of go from there. So uh, it'll be useful for me personally for video capture. I may end up tearing down the machine later on and putting things back in their original cases because this case is kind of cool. But having everything inside of the same machine means that, one, it's a lot more portable. I can move it around without... Uh, lugging around extremely heavy old hardware like I happen to have right now. Two, Raspberry Pis are always useful. And three, I didn't really spend all that much money in picking up these things. I picked up all three of these. These right here. I picked up all three of these recently on eBay. Um, of these three, the Raspberry Pi was actually the more expensive one. Uh, Raspberry Pis are $40 including the heat sinks. Little baby heat sink. Um, the Thin Client was $20, or a little bit under $20, and the NUC was a little under $20. So, these three combined did not cost that much money, and yes, I actually still have the I.O. Shield, it's just not attached. So, yeah. First thing I need to do, though, is to go to a craft store. So, we're, let's go do that. Let's go for a walk. It's a nice day outside, after all. I mean, I know it looks dreary, because, well, it's recovering from winter, so, but it's currently 10 degrees outside, which for me is short sleeve t-shirt and shorts weather, so let's go. I'm going to switch over to my uh, smartphone just so I'm not carrying a bulky camera around, and nothing says love like a cat hook. Indeed, let's go. Hey, remember the last time I recorded something about this place? Um, this is the new construction that's coming up nearby where I live. It's exact sciences as for the sun. And, yeah, it's mostly complete at this point. Unfortunately, nowhere near as beautiful. This used to be like a foresty like area. Foresty park area. Uh, oh well. La Nopalarea, or the Nope, as I've affectionately referred to it. Delicious tortas. Right next to it, Michael's. 
home of free doom when it comes to July 4th. And also the best turkey burgers I've ever had. Neither one of these are very far from my house, and that's most unfortunate for my waistline. All right, let's see if I can find the store. Oh, right, there's only three stores in the entire mall. We're going here. So this is the stuff I was thinking about picking up. I'm concerned it'll make too much of a mess, though, so I think I'm going to go with something else. This is the same type of thing, right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, they have these style of bricks. This is just a foam brick, nothing special. But this isn't easy to cut into, it just breaks apart. It's not really carvable to speak of. There's this, which is would probably work just fine, except that there's no square pieces of it. It's only round, and that's a lot more annoying to deal with. Cutting that much would probably cause it to, once more, break apart. Lots of foam balls, but again, this isn't the type of thing I need. I think I might need to go build my own. I'm thinking of going with something like this. This is a thicker foam. This would probably work well for cutting. And it's thick enough where hopefully it will actually hold things in place. Otherwise, maybe I can do two layers of this. And it's hard to do this while I'm overlapped. Then thinner foam for the underneath because I'm going to need to temporarily make a tray for this. We'll try this route first. I don't know how well this is going to work, but this won't cost very much. Yeah, $1.49 for that, and $0.59 cents for that. Yeah, this is acceptable. Could go with a larger piece. Uh, how much larger is the larger piece, anyway? Stupid American sizing. Um, it's twice as large, roughly. 30 by 45 centimeters versus freedom units. Ugh. Hence the roughly twice as large. Okay, um, I'll go with the smaller ones. Hi, Evie. This is Midwestern for Publix. Mmm. Had to show this. Just because. It's soon in the silhouette. Aww. Anyway, I'm back. Isun's trying to eat the camera. It's right here. <laughs> anyway, I'm back from my walk to the craft store. I've actually been back for a while now, but my feet were exhausted because I walked a lot. How much did I walk? Let's see, fit. What do you say? 5.28 miles. What in the world is that in a useful unit of measurement? I don't know because Google Fit's being dumb in its units. Yeah, so that is how much I walked. So yeah, um, I don't exactly live that close to everything, but I picked up some crafting supplies. I also picked up my medication so I can, you know, not die. That would be nice. Picked up a couple of craft supplies, like this T-square. That'll be very useful for cutting things. I've got multiple varieties of foam. So I've got this. This is relatively thick, stable, and cuttable with an X-Acto knife. I've got lighter weight foam. Um, this is more flexible, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do this yet. And then I also have very thin foam. This I figure I can probably use for the bottom of what I'm going to craft. By the way, I am not good at arts and crafts. Uh, in fact, up until recently, I generally assumed that I was abysmal at it. I'm not actually as bad as that. It's more of a um, personal psychological failing, I guess you could say. So, yep, Isun's trying to help. I also have some emergency gummy bears for when I eventually have an anxiety attack. And how do you like dem apples? I like dem apples quite a bit. So, 
and medication, and most importantly, I got my own X-Acto knife because I was borrowing my housemates and I kind of feel bad about that. And I've wanted one for a while anyway. Um, so material-wise for this particular project, um, this cost a buck fifty. So much crud on the bottom of my backpack. I'm gonna have to get things off. Um, this foam sheet cost sixty cents. This is actually one board. I had the folks at the Arts and Crafts place cut it for me. They're very nice. And this is two dollars and fifty cents. So once more, cheap supplies. Um, the Raspberry Pi itself is actually the most expensive thing that I have for any part of this project. So yeah, let's begin, shall we? Before I do anything, the first thing I am going to need is some way to insulate the bottom of this Raspberry Pi from the metal computer case that I have over here. So it'll either be sitting on a shelf or it won't have a shelf. Um, it probably won't have a shelf given where the three and a half inch bay is, but I need to insulate it from metal because Raspberry Pi, definitely not meant to be insulated from metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the base of this pie out of this thin foam. Now, I may end up wanting to use something thicker for the bottom of this, but I kind of like having the blue design because the Raspberry Pi is going to be decorated blue. Blue raspberry. Uh, and eventually I have plans where this will end up getting color-coded, so blue raspberries for the Raspberry Pi. Let's go! I suppose this will do. So, um, I'm going to make just a basic base underneath this. And honestly, I probably should be using like something to mark this on, but I'm not. Also, whose bright idea was it for an exact... Okay, it actually is covered with plastic. I was trying to peel this and noticing, hey look, the top part where you can actually peel it from, the blade is right there. Uh, the blade's actually covered in plastic, so they were not quite as dumb as I was thinking they were. Hooray! Now, let's make sure I don't exacto knife my own hands. I've never actually done something like this on camera, and really, I've barely done something like this at all. Okay. And so I'm destroying the packaging entirely. It's kind of my thing. All right. Exacto knife. Ah, yeah. There we go. The main thing I want to do is try to make sure that my cuts are straight. So that's why I have the T-square here. T-square can grip off of the side here and allow me to do this. I'm making it slightly larger than the actual pie itself. Put the pie out of the way. Reinforce that cut. Okay. And then see where I need to make it over here. Yeah, you didn't think that my computing introduction project would be an arts and crafts project, did ya? Well, I like doing arts and crafts. I always liked it as a kid. But I was constantly told that I was bad at it. There's a lot of things like that in my case, and I've actually gotten on my mom's case for reinforcing those ideas after the fact. Not like accusing or anything like that. I'm. Mom did the best that she could, but there were several things that she did um, poorly. Hmm. I don't have a cover for this just dawned on me. All I have is this piece of plastic, and that's a recipe for disaster. I'm gonna have to buy a cover for this thing, aren't I? Because seriously, there is no cover? I mean, I guess I could put the blade back. That might not be a terrible idea. Okay, so we have... Ugh, this lighting angle is horrible. So we've got this bottom thing. Let's go on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. Like so. So, this will prevent it from getting shorted out on the bottom. And this foam is not electrically conductive, so we should be good. We should be good, right? 
All right, now that we have the bottom thing, um, what I want to try to do at this point is to plug things in and set it up. So I'm going to need some equipment. Logged up the monitor from the basement, along with the DVI cord with an HDMI adapter, and this should be good. Can you see him? What are you looking at? Really, I should try to do this differently? Well, at least get you in better light. Okay, yeah, I should probably do this the right way. You're right, it's in. Now, before I forget, I need to remove the micro SD card. Because this is where they decided to stick the micro SD card slot on my laptop. Good job! The SIM card, but you know what? That could just be done later. Alright, so what I have is OBS running. You can see how glossy the screen is now. Review coming. Um, I have OBS running, it is recording. And I have my micro SD card slot, uh, micro SD card that will be going into the Pi. Uh, I should probably rig the tripod back up again. This tripod's useful, but not so great in some ways. Uh, let's. It's one of those flexible tripods, so apologies for the really bad camera angle. Um, all right, let's move this around a bit. More like that, maybe? Uh, still can't see it. Move things back, and there we go. Now you can see it. So, uh, not that you can see me, but you can still see my shirt. Yay. So, micro SD card slot on this is right here. So, we will oops, plug this in right side up instead of upside down. There we go. Now it's plugged in, and we can plug in the power. Hmm. So one of the things that I wanted to... Uh, one of the things that I wanted to make sure of when it comes to this project is I didn't have anything funky. So Raspberry Pis will have power as long as you put it and give it power, and it's not really feasible to remove from power without unplugging it. Since this is going to be going inside of that, I need a way to actually turn it on and off. Luckily, I thought about this advance, and I have this. This is a power switch. Just normal power switch, on and off, with USB ports. So what I'm going to do is way back here at my plug, eventually this will be inside of the computer for reference, but for testing purposes it's not. So I can't even see if that's, oh, there we go. So rather than having it like this, I'm going to plug This into one side, this into the other. This is easier said than done when you're trying to do this with one hand. I have the cord upside down. Of course I do. Stupid USB superpositional theory. Sorry, it's annoying. Just trying to turn in my hand. There we go. So that's plugged in. Now let's go back here. And plug it in here. This should not turn anything on because the switch is not on yet. And in fact, there's no LEDs turning on. You'd be able to at least see the network LED. So now let's flip it on and let's see what happens. And I still don't have power, do I? Oh, 
Okay. Maybe there's something wrong with the switch. Oh, or maybe I need to actually turn on the plug strip. There we go. That works better. So, um, I should probably have it pointed at me at the moment. So, um, we're waiting for the Raspberry Pi to boot. It's booting. I don't have a great way of synchronizing this, so you'll have to believe me that I really am synchronizing it. My plug strip is providing it full power. There was some issues when I did the initial testing inside of this machine. We'll address those in a bit. Um, but it's booting RetroPie, which is exactly what I told it to. RetroPie is a Raspberry Pi based, or Raspberry Pi operating system. I'm trying to get the tripod where I don't have to hold it. That'll work. Uh, so it's a Raspberry Pi operating system it's also going much faster this time, which is good. There were some issues last time. Uh, it's an operating system that boots into Emulation Station and, um, well, RetroPie. Uh, RetroPie is a multi-system emulator, or I should say it's a front end for um, LibMediaFen. Uh, hey, editor me from the future, would you mind um, putting it down below my face, what it is uh, for? Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so that's what the little Raspberry Pi is booting. And the whole point of this machine is to basically be an emulation box. So that's what I want it to do. I need a keyboard, I'll be right back. Looks like it's still booting. Uh, so I have my wireless keyboard and mouse. I'm just plugging the little dongle. Dongle's a fun word to say, haha, <laughs> dongle. Okay, then I can turn on the wireless keyboard, which it will soak in those glorious solar-powered rays. By the way, wireless keyboards that have solar panels on it, totally awesome. It effectively means that you never have to deal with batteries, even though I have a wireless keyboard. Unfortunately, this particular one is um, not so strong. Still doing first boot, wow. Okay, well, while that's happening, we need to do some plans. Right, in. Right. So, I had drawn up some plans for exactly how I wanted this to work. Unfortunately, I saved this on a computer that I don't currently have access to today. So, I'm going to have to redraw it. From scratch. Ugh, so much dust on that computer case. Ugh. I should clean it up. Oh, now it's booting. Okay, emulation station just popped up. First boot takes a long time. And this was one of the issues that I had when I did my preliminary testing, is that it seemed to take a really long time to boot, and I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, there's no reason for it to do so, it's just slow. So while this is happening, I should talk about some aspects of the project. So my goals are to kind of make it a sleeper box. That is to say that at a quick glance, you can't tell that the computer is hosting anything weird about it. In this case, I'm using an older computer case, but, there we go. Yep, so it's detecting keyboard. Start, select. A, B, X, Y. Left, right, left. That's not what I wanted. Hold on. Uh, mouse is turned off. Try it. Mm -hmm. uh, I messed that up. Oh, well. Right. Left thumb, right thumb. Up, down, left, right. I'm really just choosing keys at this point. <coughs> just trying to set this up briefly. I thought I had it set up. Maybe I should actually go plug in a gamepad. Anyway, um, point is, uh, what I'm trying to do with this is to have it be a sleeper. It doesn't have any very obvious signs of it being any different than normal. And it, 
What is it, Isun? <sighs> Isun's asking me why in the world I'm doing this. Mostly because it's not involved him, involving him actually eating. So, I already have computers plugged into my TV and so on. I don't particularly need a Raspberry Pi like this to do my bidding. So, why am I doing this? Because I want to. I feel drained creatively. I don't get a chance to flex my creative muscle very often. Uh, DMing is pretty much my only creative outlet at this point. Okay, there we go. It's finally went. Which, of course, it has nothing in it right now, but that's fine. I need to choose configuration. Ooh, this is running really slow. Um, because we need to configure it for wireless so I can actually do things. The reason why I'm confused is why this is running so slow. This is the second Raspberry Pi that I've been working on. And this one feels a lot slower than the last one. I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe it just needs a clock speed increase. Anyway, um, I feel creatively lacking, and I figured this would be a neat way to encompass some of the things I'm very good at with some things that I don't really have much experience in. So, I don't really have experience in doing design work or um, cutting things out or arts and crafts type of thing, but I have plenty of experience doing computery stuff, and I'm definitely doing computerish stuff when it comes to this project. So, I wanted to try to make something cool. I've spent a decent... in each Vita, I give myself a budget. Um, usually the budget goes toward things like uh, cameras. This camera that I'm talking to right now came from my first Vita budget. Or second? First or second? I think this one came from the second Vita budget, and the first Vita budget came the uh, tripod that I'm actually using right now. Um, I've bought some lighting, not really lighting equipment, but things that make lighting slightly better. I have bought a green screen that will probably come up in a later Let's Play. And this time I wanted to buy something that would be shown on camera. Not just, hey look, I'm going to upgrade my camera or anything like that. I wanted to do something better. And boy, is this thing taking a long time to do things. That's really concerning to me. I wonder if there's something wrong with my Pi. I hope not. This project already has one piece of equipment that's not working properly. I don't need a second. So yeah. Um, there's not really much else to it. I wanted to do something. This is something that would actually be beneficial to me in the long run. Because if I can cram three machines inside of an existing machine without taking too much extra space, that allows me to move things more easily. So if I do end up moving to a different house, a different state, a different country, a different continent, then I have less stuff to move. And a lot of my retro stuff when it comes to my actual equipment is big and bulky. I mentioned that earlier today, and I don't think you realize just how big and bulky we're talking about. Dang, this thing is being slow. I mean, this was lightning fast for the gift that I gave my creator. <sighs> anyway, um... So yeah, I want to try to make things cool. I'm actually wanting to... I don't want to edit the libretro. Libretro, that's what it is. I don't want to edit libretro configs, I want to edit the pi config. I don't suppose... yeah, no. I'm just going to cancel out of this. Okay. Raspy config, that's the one I wanted to hit. Why did I do anything else, me? Okay. Let this load. Um... So yeah. Part of my design plan is to use, let me grab this from here, use a three and a half inch faceplate. This is a faceplate for this particular computer, but I'm going to design a three and a half inch faceplate using some of the foam stuff that I bought. Probably end up using this, may end up using this to do a kind of template for it, and then I'm going to have a friend 3D print the actual front thing. 
I want the power switch available here. I want one or two USB ports available, probably two. I have USB extension cables to make that happen. And I'm thinking I may want the HDMI output available, but I don't know yet. Um, there's a bit of a hitch with that. And then there's one other component that will be available that I will show in a moment. So, let's go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi. Uh, US. Really? United States Wi-Fi. Yes, it's seen. It's a beautiful day outside, by the way. It's currently 20 degrees. Um, absolutely gorgeous on my walk back. Yes, Wi-Fi country is set. That's fine. SSID, that would be basement cat. I think it's one word. Uh, my phone will tell me. Which is covered in garbage because of the inside of my backpack. I really need to replace my backpack. It is literally falling apart on the inside. Um, so, Wi-Fi networks. Yes, all in word, basement cat. My two Wi-Fi networks for the ones that I can actually type are basement cat, actually basement cat's back there, and ceiling cat. And yes, I am fully aware of those jokes. Let's see, okay, it's not visible so you won't see the password. Although this is the one I hand out to random people, so. Eventually this will be my guest network. Right now I don't have the separation between guest and primary network. Okay, so I've got that. Um, boot options. This is really weird to read through uh, my... I'm actually looking at this through OBS rather than through a screen. Let's see, desktop CLI. Wait for network at boot. Oh, maybe that's the reason why I'm having some issues. I should probably switch that to no, to be honest. Hmm. No, it's still going really slow. This should be practically instant. I don't know what's going on with this. Okay. Um, let's go to overclock. This pie cannot be locked? What? There's definitely something up here. Maybe I just need to run some updates. Hmm. One moment. All right, I'm back. Um, the overclocking thing is apparently because the Raspberry Pi 3 doesn't have the built-in overclock, whereas the Raspberry Pi 2 does. I could have swore I did that for the other th Pi 3 that I had, but okay. I'm um, still not sure why it's running so slow, though. Uh, we're going to need to reboot this machine. Yeah. Helps if I use the correct keyboard. Yes, you can go ahead and reboot. And hopefully this will work a little bit better because that was really slow. Meow. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do after this boots is I'm going to shut it down properly. Actually, I'm not gonna shut it down properly. I'm gonna transfer at least one game over because this is just running off of wireless. And that's fine for what I need it for. Um. Then I'm going to physically, yeah, that's much better. That's more like the speed that I was expecting. Um, then I'm going to start putting in the machine. And we'll see what happens. Ah, cat! Ugh. He jumped on my lap while I have a keyboard on my lap. All right, machine shut down at this point. I have the Raspberry Pi right here. And in an ideal world, I would actually have this like screwed in using little screw holes here. I don't want to do that right now because that would take effort and this flimsy thing is not going to support that. So let's go ahead and put things into the computer case, shall we? So first off, I need to grab this. There we go. One moment. There we go. So this is going to go inside the computer case. I'm going to keep the little um, USB thing here for the time being. Everything's falling down. In fact, you know what? Actually fall down. There. So, I am planning on putting this inside of this tray here. That's the reason why I needed the shielding. So, probably like so. Um, move it back a bit, even. Yep, Isun is trying to play around with things. Isun's always very interested in anything that I'm doing. 
It's a strange experience because cats are usually so standoffish by comparison, and Isun is not at all. So, what we're going to need to do is that we're going to need to start running some things up to the holes that you see here. And there's a few things that I want to run, but there is one major thing I want to do first. This is what isun has been going after. This is an extension cable for a micro SD card. So, what we're going to end up doing, see what I mean? No isun. What we're going to end up doing is taking the micro SD card out here. There we go. Isun's going to rub up against the camera as usual. And then we're going to be plugging this in. There we go. Now the extension is in. Let's place this back here. Oh, this might be a problem. I don't have as much clearance as I thought I did. Let's go ahead and turn this. I mean, for implementation, it's not going to matter what direction it's actually sitting in. Um, hold on, I need both hands for a moment. There we go, I just need to flip it around. I also added this right angle HDMI here which I have just enough clearance where nothing's touching, which is actually something I had designed, so that's nice. Uh, it'd be nice if I had a right angle micro USB, but I can loop it around back here. That shouldn't be a big deal. Um, so this is the add-on. This is a micro SD card adapter, or extender, I should say. And what's going to happen is that this is actually going to be front-facing. That way, we can easily take this out and put in a different micro SD card. I like it where, you know, you can actually change things with it powered off and so on. That's one of the points of the project. Next thing, uh, this is another thing that I have. This is a 4-pin Molex to USB power, which is nice. I'm going to need one of them for this. The other one is currently reserved, but it's going to have a point at some point. I don't know when. So yeah, let's plug things in. Um, going to try to use my tripod here. I don't exactly have a bunch of space, so hold on. Let's slide the thing back in. Nope, this is not going to do. Not at all. Need to stand this taller. You are going to go inside of here now. Actually, I need to stand this taller, not shorter me. And then move this up and out of the way. This is not going to cooperate, is it? Nothing about this is going to cooperate. This actually entire setup needs to be up a bit higher. Hmm. Need to find some way of rising it up a significant amount. Uh, let's use a board game, because uh, that's one of the few things I have an excess of. Hmm. Let me think, let me think, let me think. First off, move this over a bit so I have more space. And actually, this box will probably work just fine. And then, raise this up some. Everything is in the way. There we go. Now I can adjust the tripod a bit. There, that's a little bit better. So, I need to plug the USB cord in. Where did I put that? Here it is. So, USB cord with the little switch thingy. Switch thingy is just going to set out here for the time being. I need a second USB cord, don't I? No, I don't. I'm fine. So, what I'm planning on doing is the USB things over here. Plug this in. Like so. Put this back. This is going to be run back here. None of these are going to be the final USB cord for reference. I'm going to go in after the video and replace some of the parts with things that are not dumb for the setup. And, uh, dang it, that's what I was afraid of. So, You'll notice that the Raspberry Pi is getting upended back here, and the reason for that is that the Pi is so lightweight that it can't support anything. That's the same problem I'm going to have when I plug in the HDMI cord. That's the reason why there's not one plugged in right now. So, for the example, 
going to plug in the HDMI cord while I'm at it. And now you see that it's just upending because the weight of the HDMI cord is too heavy. And everything is so much... Urgh. Maybe I need like a little platform or box back in there. Hmm. I'll figure that out some other time. So, let's make sure that you are not going to short. I don't think you are, actually. And my cats have started crying for hunger because it's getting close to feeding time. Uh, this has probably been the longest vlog I have had ever. So we're just going to finish up with what I currently have for reference. I'm going to move this cord back in. Again, things are just going to be hanging out for a bit. And then we will plug... Are you kidding me? You were tangled. Okay. I'm going to plug this in. Yes, power is currently off. I don't want it turned on like this. Because seriously, what the heck. I really need it to be not like that. A uh, right angle micro SD, eh, micro SD. Right angle micro USB would be ideal for this. Uh, I don't think I have anything currently around that will help. I'll deal with that some other time. So, um, we have that. Everything is set. In theory, it should work right now. This is actually going to be going out, not. I'm just having things hang outside of the case for the time being, because it's eventually going to be mounted, but not today. Okay, we've got that. This is not touching any metal, so that's good. Um, the HDMI cord is kind of just hanging out at the moment, so the intent is that I'm going to be using one of these. This is a 3-in-1 mini HDMI switch. So what this does is it takes three HDMI plugs, and then outputs one. You'll notice that there's no power on this. That's because this actually just uses power off of the HDMI itself. It's also a simple switch where the moment something turns on, it switches to it. Which, since I'm going to have three different objects inside of here, this is a good plan. Hooray for good plans! So the plan is to just have this sitting down here with this plugged in. That's not going to work for my testing, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. But, yeah. Okay. This is pretty much where I'm going to stop this time. Um, yeah, so we have a couple of things that are on output right now. We've got the power plug right here. And we also have the micro SD card slot. We're also going to have two USB ports over here for reference. I just... Need to find where I put those USB extension cords. So yeah, this is a convoluted project, isn't it? Was this what you were expecting my secret project to be? I doubt it, except for the people I told about. Um, we're also going to need to, next time, to solve the problem of, so this is currently plugged into the power supply of the computer, and that should be more than enough power for Raspberry Pi. The problem is that it isn't. And the reason for that is that, in theory, there's not enough load on the main computer itself. So I'm going to have to start throwing devices into here to drain power off of it temporarily. Because the only thing plugged in right now is the motherboard. Nothing else is plugged in. You can even see back here the cables. Um, one of them is going out and about and through and so on to the motherboard. And the other one is also going to the motherboard. There's n the only other cable is the one that I'm using for the Pi. So yeah. Hope this has been an interesting look. I really hope so, because I'm, I'm hoping to enjoy quite a bit of this. I am going to be working off camera, so you're going to start seeing a couple of things updated from time to time. Mostly because uh, otherwise these are going to be multiple hour long videos. I don't want to edit that much, never mind anything else. So... Yeah, hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you next time, Internet. Bye!